After just finishing a playthrough of Alchemilla, I wanted to come back and give my thoughts about it. Alchemilla is a free source mod made by White Noise that tries to recreate the atmosphere of Silent Hill. To say that it's heavily inspired by Silent Hill would probably be an understatement. Even though I'm not very familiar with the Silent Hill franchise, I was still able to recognize a lot of the very iconic Silent Hill things, like the nurses, the rust and industrial grime-covered environments, and that music that kind of pulses and pounds and grinds and makes all sorts of strange noises. So yes, this is very much attempting to be a Silent Hill game, although from what I've heard there are some differences which I'll go into a little bit later. When I first started off in Alchemilla, everything seemed almost normal, but not quite. Alchemilla is really good at building up this feeling of dread. As I wandered around, I just kept wondering, where is everybody? I couldn't find anybody, and there's this strange mist, and the environments that I'm walking around look like they've been abandoned for maybe 10 or 20 years. It just felt wrong, you know? It just, the environment didn't feel right. I felt like this can't be real. This doesn't make any sense. It just, there's this really weird feeling of unease that runs throughout the whole thing. But again, at first, everything seemed almost normal, just kind of weird. But as you continue on, it just goes deeper and deeper into the insanity of your character. And the environments reflect his state of mind. So your character ends up in some deep, dark places, both literally and figuratively. And that brings me to one of the things that I like the most about this game, and that's the environments. The environments are just exceptionally realized. They're, at first, just subtly wrong. There's just something about the way everything's designed that just makes everything seem subtly wrong. But then it starts going full-on crazy. Just, everything is so grimy and rusty and bloody and just disgusting and weird. Sometimes you'll be standing on a chain-link fence, and that's the only thing between you and a, a bottomless abyss. And there's sometimes massive industrial fans that seem so big that if you stepped into them you'd just be chopped to bits. It's really an environment that not only looks really good in its horribleness, in its disturbingness, but it just feels so unwelcoming. The places that you go to feel like they hate you, it feels like they want to kill you, and that at any moment something might just stab you or give way. The environments are just really exceptional, and without a doubt one of my favorite things about Alchemilla. Now let's talk about one of my least favorite things about Alchemilla, and that is the puzzles. Alchemilla is much more of an adventure game than survival horror, which I believe is a bit of a departure from the Silent Hill games, which I think had a greater focus on action. Most of the game basically consists of hunting down keys. So basically, you find a key, wander around until you figure out which door it goes to, then inside of that door maybe there's a riddle of some sort, you solve the riddle, which gives you another key, which opens another door, which has another riddle, which gives you another key, which opens another door, which has another key, and then, it, yeah, you get the picture. There was actually one exception. Uh, at one point you actually had to find acid, and use that to break off a rusty old lock. Although I guess in that case, the acid is kind of just like another version of a key. Literally, almost the entire game comes down to either finding keys, which are just on their own, on a table or something, solving riddles, which give you access to keys, or using the right object on something, which also gives you access to keys. What you actually have to do to get the keys is at least moderately varied. Again, oftentimes the key is just sitting out on a desk or something and you can just pick it up. But oftentimes, there's some sort of a riddle to solve, and the riddles have a pretty good variety to them. And at first these puzzles were at least moderately interesting. I wasn't annoyed with them or anything like that, and they were kind of interesting just because they were new and I wasn't quite sure what to expect. But after a while, they just simply got old. They don't really do anything particularly interesting, they're all kind of fairly bog-standard adventure game kind of stuff and they're only tenuously connected to what's actually going on thematically in the game. Really, the only connection that most of the puzzles actually have to what's happening is just that they involve you doing or interacting with creepy stuff. 
which definitely fits the mood of what's happening. But other than that, they're not really that connected. They're just kind of abstract number puzzles and stuff like that. And yeah, it's just kind of box standard adventure game stuff, and after a while I just got kind of sick of it. I didn't hate it, but it was just more about going through the motions and just getting it done. It got to the point where I didn't see the puzzles as things that were interesting in and of themselves, but rather things that were simply barriers to the parts of the game that I actually enjoyed. There are also some playability issues with the puzzles that I think are worth mentioning. One is the fact that this game does not have any inventory system of any sort. So if you pick up a wrench and a key and maybe something else, there's really no guaranteed way to actually know that you have those things, unless you just like write it down or remember it. Normally this is not that big of an issue, because you typically don't end up carrying too many items at one point, but there was the occasional time when I really wanted to know what I had in my inventory and there was just no way to check. Another playability issue with the puzzles is that the English is often very broken. Which is not only an issue for understanding the story, of course, but it's a massive issue for actually being able to solve the puzzles, because the puzzles are often riddles, as I said. And to solve the riddles, you have to read the text and actually understand what it's trying to tell you. But sometimes I would read the text and I would just stare at it in utter bewilderment, just thinking, what in the hell is this trying to tell me? Sometimes the English is just really broken. Another playability issue that I encountered with the puzzles was one particular puzzle right next to the end of the game, actually. It completely bugged out on me, and I ended up having to reload a save game from about 15 minutes prior, and then redo all the progress that I'd lost, which was really a buzzkill. And when I finally got back to the puzzle and did it again, I actually realized exactly how it had bugged out, and I'm pretty sure how to repeat it. And it's actually a really easy to repeat bug. I mean, it's something that any player reasonably trying to solve the puzzle could very easily hit, and not realize what happened, just as I didn't realize what happened the first time. Now, let's talk about a part of Alchemilla that I really liked, and that's the music. If there's anything that's even near the quality of the environments, it would be the music, and I think I maybe even liked the music more than the environments. The music is really exceptional, and I mean across the board, every single track was exceptional. There's everything from this kind of low hum that just pervades everything and kind of takes over your senses, to some tracks that just kind of sound like industrial madness. They'll just be the sound of machinery that just suddenly comes in, almost like a jump scare in the music. Just sounds like this massive machinery and pistons and stuff just suddenly come in and envelop everything and just scare the hell out of me. And it, it almost sounds like battle music, like something's chasing me and I keep looking behind me, going, what the hell is that? And it basically kept making me panic. This machinery sound would just come in like a freaking freight train and smash into me. And then it would just go away for a second, a couple seconds. And then it would come back. And then it would go away. And then it would come back like this... It's like the heartbeat, the sick heartbeat of this game's soundtrack, of this game's world, was wonderfully realized. Now let's talk about how this game ends, and don't worry, no spoilers. Alchemilla has a really abrupt ending, the sort of ending that didn't feel like an actual ending but more simply like a stopping, as if it's just where the game decided to stop for some reason. Normally you can kind of feel when something's going to end, whether it be a game or a book or a movie or something. I can usually feel when things are coming to a head, but in this case I really couldn't. Which, you know, that could be a kind of interesting thing to do to end in an unpredictable place, but it didn't feel interesting to me, it just left me feeling kind of detached. And the word detached is probably a good description of how I felt about the story. It is actually a story that I find interesting at its core, but I think the main problem that I had with it is the pacing. The story is explored in really brief moments that are separated by massive chunks of fairly dull puzzle solving. In the end, it felt like a game that had just been stretched too thin. It felt like it should have been maybe more like two hours instead of seven. Despite all my problems with Alchemilla, I actually really enjoyed it. It does feel stretched too thin, 
and the puzzles are fairly dull and kind of buggy. But it also has some wonderful environments, amazing music, and a great sense of atmosphere. Once again, this has been Alcamilla. It is completely free, and I'll have a link in the description to where you can check it out for yourself. Thank you for watching.